Ah, rare. Creators of many an interesting game, including this almost bizarre figment of my memory. I played the shit out of Jet Force Gemini as a kid. And yet it feels like it almost didn't happen. If it hadn't ended up on Rare Replay, I could have sworn it was just something I made up. That's a lie right there. <laughs> so this game was developed specifically by the Blast Core team on Rare. I didn't know this, but Rare actually had multiple teams sort of competing against each other. You kind of had to when you make as many games as Rare did in the Nintendo 64 days. They just pumped them out throughout the, that console's entire life cycle. They were the kings of it, practically. Yeah. Third party, anyway. Jet Force Gemini specifically is a third-person shooter. It's inspired by a lot of sci-fi, including Aliens and Stargate, but it still maintains a sort of cartoony and yet oddly dark tone and design to it. Yeah, I played this game for like a half hour today before we started recording just to kind of get an idea of the game. And that is definitely how it felt. It felt like it took itself kind of seriously, and that surprised me considering how the game looks. It's got an interesting art style, like the humans look all realistic, but anything that's not a human has like enormous eyes and shit. <laughs> yeah. So these are our player characters. The man is Juno. This is Vela, and their dog is Lupus. They're named after uh, celestial bodies. And Vela has the most ridiculous outfit. It is very small. Also, isn't Lupus a disease? It is also a celestial body. Oh, okay. I think it's a moon or an asteroid. Which came first, the celestial body, the disease, or the dog? This is the plot. Ants are fucking with owl yetis. <laughs> Basically, so like, bug aliens are invading. These are Mizar's forces. Gemini is specifically just this team of the Jet Force, but something happened in the backstory, and now Gemini are the only team remaining. And they're under attack by Mizar now. Not much in the way of dialogue in these cutscenes, either. And they're way more violent than I was expecting. This game definitely earns its teen rating. Lots of bug juice. Although I will... I will relay a bizarre detail of my recording of this. So, I had the game audio muted while I was recording this, and I was listening to Neil Cicerega's mashup albums. So, my soundtrack for this cutscene specifically was the vocals of System of a Down's Chop Suey, to Elton John's Crocodile Rock. <laughs> that was a very interesting moment in my life, and I want to thank you for that, Neil. It's so violent and serious, but wake up! <laughs> so right off the start, we can only play as Juno. All of the characters control the same, except each of them has a specific ability. Juno's doesn't come into play until quite later, though. He's got a huge brain. And padding. He's actually protected. Although Lupus is sort of like a dog tank. Ooh. Apparently this is a thing in the lore. Members of Jet Force will sometimes have their pets weaponized. Like, I think Lupus basically has human intelligence. But I think he was enhanced to have that, and they gave him guns. Vela's not prepared for anything. I mean, look at her. Yeah. Her legs are, and arms are gonna chop off at any moment. This is the most Nintendo 64 game I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Man, these textures. It's not just how the game looks. That's the reason that I'm playing the Rare Replay version. 
It's because the N64 version is horrible to control nowadays. And considering the trouble I had controlling this when I played it, that terrifies me. I'm going to have nightmares thinking of that. It's the better version, and it's still rough. You know, I, I said this is the most Nintendo 64 looking game I've ever seen, but honestly, like the whole sci fi shooter type deal reminds me a lot of PlayStation as well. Just something about the whole aesthetic makes me think of a Sony game. Yeah. But it's definitely got that rare vibe, especially because these creatures seem to. Why are you shooting the health? To show that you can actually shoot it and it will move. But you can't shoot your allies. The weird thing is the reticle turns red when it's an ally. It turns green when it's an enemy. Usually it's the reverse. And that can be kind of confusing. That deeply confused me. There's a part later specifically where that confused me. I'll talk about it when we get there. It probably confused quite a few people. And it can actually make the game harder. So is this game good, Thorn? Uh, six or seven out of ten good, but yeah. All right, fair enough. We'll, we'll go into details. But it's definitely a game of its time. It was the coolest shit when it came out, but there have been a lot of upgrades. Like, we're uh, Let's Playing Doom at the same time. That's something that probably controls better now, but like even still, Jacob had to mod it to make it control a little more modern than how it does. Yeah, a source port that just kind of gives it modern WASD and mouse controls, yeah. Jet Force could probably benefit from something similar. I think they got as close as they could with Rare Replay while maintaining the feel of it. This game would probably play really well with a mouse and keyboard. You know what? I really agree. From what I've felt of it. I do love that the leader of the tribals is named Jeff. <laughs> so understated a name. It probably has some ancient meaning in their language. soundtrack is pretty good for this game. It was composed by Robin Beanland, who I'm not familiar with what they've done, and also a Graham Norgate, who I do know from the GoldenEye soundtrack with Grant Kirkhope. Got some good talent on this soundtrack, that damn. And also uh, Alistair Lindsay. I don't know who did what specifically, but just the sound font sounds so GoldenEye to me. Hey, pretty mama, let me tell you something about the stick I'm holding. If you're wearing the bugs, and you've got a stick with a bug's head on it, you can't be shocked when they get mad. Oh! We had someone turn Steve into a maraca. This stock baby crying sound repeated several times. <laughs> and yet it's still kind of sad. Poor Owl Yeti had their family killed. Anyway. Ah. Hey! Nothing happens if you shoot the NPCs. But the main point of Jet Force Gemini is rescuing the Tribals, and if you shoot the Tribals, they die. There's a door over there. That symbol is for a golden key. The specific symbol means key, the color refers to what color a key. But these are what the doors are generally going to be. These are kill doors. You have to actually kill the enemies in the area to open them. The game is very arcadey. The amount of times I've heard that bird in games. Games, cartoons, movies, probably. 
Rare were the masters of stock sound effects. This is actually important information he is giving for getting around the levels. The levels are separated into different chunks, and on each door is a green or red symbol. Green means they're going forward in the map, red means they're going backwards. And there are also these tubes on the ground that light up when you're entering a new chunk of level. Each major chunk of a planet or a ship has its own number of tribals to rescue. And every time you leave or go to a new chunk, the game saves your progress and how many of those tribals you've saved. Goldwood, Forest World. Liberate this once peaceful planet from Mizar and his evil drones. Colored gems can be collected. These will increase your health. Recover it, rather. Even this, the gift sprites of these power-ups look so blurry. <laughs> Beware of Mizar's soldier drones. They remain on Goldwood in great numbers. Though weak, they often travel in groups. Don't be caught off guard by sniper drones. They use the treetops as ambush points. Pick them off using manual targeting. These crates contain ammunition. Collect them to increase your supplies. The middle ones specifically increase your maximum ammo. Across the level, you will find the tribals. This bear-like race has been enslaved by my I have nothing to mine, but I can't stop. I must mine against all odds. <laughs> And you just took another step. You are now another step closer. And again. And again. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, so that's the results screen. Ah, goddammit. You didn't do shit. Nope. Every time you leave an area and go back to it, the area basically resets. It's original Banjo-Kazooie notes rules. You gotta collect everything in one run. So that means if one of the tribals dies, you gotta redo it. Wow. So this is something that really appealed to me as a kid. You can shoot the heads off of the drones and collect them, and every hundred of them, up to 300, unlocks a new secret. Was it the secret collecting or the decapitation that appealed to you? Both. Oh. Fair enough. The fact that collecting heads got me stuff. I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> I think they're specifically called tokens. So your first weapon, the pistol, isn't great. It has decent accuracy, but it's not super powerful. And also, when you shoot it a couple times, you'll see in the top left, it heats up, and if it overheats, you need to wait for it to cool down. Its ammo also seems to be the most abundant, so it feels like you'll always have this. Yeah, we'll also get a machine gun. It and the pistol uses the same ammo, though. It does? I didn't notice that. I mean, I wasn't paying a ton of attention, but regardless. You find a lot of capacity upgrades around. Each character has their own capacity upgrades. Also, if you kill an enemy, but they're not quite dead yet, like they're lying on the ground dying, you can still shoot the head off. I was wondering why the dead corpses were still letting me aim at them. Although, if you're really close to them and shoot downward, the head can't actually clip through the ground and you lose it anyway. Oh. And also, if you just shoot them normally, they die. No, I want that! Nope! Oh. Uh. oh, you could have got it. One of the big criticisms of the game is how it controls. You do alternate between this general running around type controls and this more zoomed in third person shooter controls. It's not super smooth. 
No, the best advice I could give is somebody who's played this game for 20 minutes and is clearly an, an authority on this game <laughs> because of it. Just try to aim as much as you can. Like, it's more it conducive to modern controls. Like, I really only zoom out if I have to see more of my surroundings. I do think you move faster if you're zoomed out. Yeah, a bit. And also, like, to give you an idea of how this game controls, at least this is the this is the setup I was using. I don't know if you could change it, but when you're not zoomed in, you move like kind of like a 3D platformer of the time with the left stick. And if you use the right stick left and right, you'll strafe in that direction. I just could not get used to that. Part of the problem is the game doesn't really take into account the dead zone of the 360 controller, because you might be able to see this. When I'm running forward, sometimes I might start veering off to the right or the left. That's because if you move that stick all the way to the front, it doesn't register it, and it can only do it diagonally. You need to move it just a little ahead. It's weird, and I don't know if like that was an oversight or this was as good as I could get it. Yeah, I had the same issue. I'm just glad to hear it wasn't just me. Now, the game, it's definitely showing its age, and this is the best way to play it, but... I feel like this is a game that could stand to be brought to the PC. But luckily we got all the tribals here and we got the golden key. Like with the uh, ammo upgrades, every character gets their own keys. Honestly, these like texture backgrounds are reminding me of the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> they kind of just look like paintings. That's kind of what they are. Yeah, kind of like how that movie did backgrounds. I always uh, respected that as a kid. But not anymore, <laughs> I guess. Also, you saw a little cave down there. Every area has diverging paths, and some characters can only go to certain paths. Vela is able to swim. That's her special ability, so that area is for her later. of explosive barrels. No enemies to explode them on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why this is here. It's an empty corridor. Do they explode, or are they just scenery? Yeah, they explode. Maybe it's just, like, set dressing. Like, Mizar's forces just left these here. Well, if there's no one to blow up, sounds like you gotta take one for the team, Thorn. Eh, I'll actually have something to shoot in this area. Not him. No, please do shoot me. I got the worst ditch. This is something worth remembering. We're not gonna be able to do this for a little while, but it's an interesting mini game. The series music is cool, just kind of repetitive. Alright, so Vela is on the SS Anubis. We can't just go directly to her. Every area, you land, and then you have to go through the whole level to get to your ship again. Love that rare humor. Astonishingly, this could be used to open doors with red <laughs> locks. <laughs> I didn't even shoot him. I felt it. I felt the aim. So we need to go through the red door because our pistol is not fast enough to shoot this lock. That's basically a speed bullet lock. And there's only one weapon that can open it. Oh, balls, a big boy. Big ball boy. Every enemy can have their head shot off. 
and you can collect it. Don't go for those heels. You will fall. And I did fall. And so did you. And then you gotta kill this guy again. Interesting note about the lore. With most insects that are large colonies, like ants, it's generally the females that do most of the work. And it was noted somewhere that most of Mizar's forces, like the regular drones, are actually female. But the big guys are guys. Oh. Because I think they're based more on termites, which do have males doing a lot of the work. But there we go. We got the machine gun. The machine gun is hands down the best weapon in the game. It's supposed to not be very accurate, but it's actually shockingly accurate. See, look, it's juddering all around, but if you aim anywhere near an enemy's head, you'll shoot it off. Yeah, but it absolutely chews through ammo, though. That's true. But luckily, like I said, the pistol and the machine gun use the same ammo, and that's the ammo that the drones drop. So as long as you switch to the machine gun, you'll generally be able to keep your stock up. Oh, be careful, get in first. Yes. Still look at it. It chews through ammo, but it chews through them, too. Not a problem. Every time that you see that, that thing signifies that you're entering a new region. Luckily, with the snipers, you only need to shoot them once to kill them. Yeah, for those, I prefer to use the pistol. Just in case, like, that one shot will flippity flop around them. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm barely trying and I'm getting their heads. Yeah, see, like, it's you're picking up machine gun ammo separately from the pistol ammo. I think they're different. No, they're the same. It's just, it depends on what weapon you're holding. Oh, it's one of those. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, just a leg. Okay. You don't get points for legs. If you stop running and hold the button down, you can do a bigger jump. There's a few cases where that's useful. Like this. This is still a pain in the ass to get to, though. It took me a good minute or so to get to that tribal. Yeah. The individual Gemini is recover your health, but there is a pickup that increases your max health. Oh boy. Ah, there's a sniper right above me. You were right about this music being repetitive. Yeah. Like, this was one part of a song, it'd be sick, but the whole thing. You might have been able to see with that last drone. I shot it in the head, but the head went through the ground. Oh, there's a lot of these. Oh, boy. These are probably the most treacherous enemies. Just because you don't really have invincibility frames. When you take a hit and you're, like, covered with these guys, you're probably going to take more hits. Come on, damn it. Jump over the Gemini. We're done. For fuck's sake. <laughs> so this was a major problem while I was recording the game. <laughs> Hi, Yoshi. The annoying thing about this being on Rare Replay is that even if you have the game bought and downloaded to your system, you need to be online at all times. My system kept losing the connection and kept signing me out, and I had to keep restarting. Thanks, Microsoft. Thanks, Modern Gaming. Anyway, that big gap 
we can't cross that. That has to be for Lupus, actually, because his special ability is a hover. Oh, he's a hover doggy? He's a hover tank dog. He's got jets on his paws. And for whatever reason, when you kill some of these guys, that door opens. And playing Spyro recently has made me realize anything. It's that it's weirdly satisfying to play as quadrupedic animals. <laughs> I don't know why. They, they feel different and they feel nice to control. Well, him having the jets does make him more fun. Otherwise, he mostly controls, like, Juno and Vela. I do like the didgeridoo. Oh god, act quickly. This guy's going specifically for the tribals. Yeah, this is the place where the red versus green got me confused. Because this guy was... had his back to me, which made me think he was like an ally, and he looked a little different. And then when I aimed at the tribals, their fucking crosshair turned red, and I was like, is this like a disguise-type deal? Do I have to shoot these things? <laughs> There's three more, and they're weirdly well hidden. They're not in this area, they're in the next one. But you can easily miss them. Oh god, pick that up. That's an invincibility. You needed to clear these guys out without dying yourself. Similar situation to that other swarm of bastards. Just even more so. More purple. More evil, therefore. And there they are. Oh, wow. Yeah. Grab them before you go through this, because otherwise you got to go through the whole thing again and collect all the tribals. Luckily, like with the notes in Banjo-Kazooie, it saves your high score. So now that I've got all the tribals in that whole stretch, I don't need to do that again. It's a bit fucked up, but you can shoot their heads off too and collect them. <laughs> Why? And it counts towards your secret score. Woohoo! At, at what he just did, not at what you just said. <laughs> yeah. I'm not happy about that mechanic. But that was Goldwood. That was the chunk with Juno. Like I said, every area diverges off and each character does their own thing. But for this first half of the game, Juno, Vela, and Lupus all have their own specific planets and ships that they go to. And then they all converge in one single point, at which point you can switch between them and go to all the other planets. So for this first chunk, we're going to be sticking with Juno. Next part is the SS Anubis. Part three will be his third planet. And then we'll be switching to Vela in part four. I always like in games where you can play as multiple different characters and look like they can access different paths and shit. So I'm really excited to see the differences between everybody. God knows I didn't quite get that far. <laughs> yeah. This is about where I stopped. So everything I pass here is uncharted territory for the Jakester. <laughs> 